yearbook and we've got the algebra. That's the yearbook. You've got the magnets as well. Oh, uh, my magnets are at home. Oh, my fridge. I've got the magnets, don't worry. <laughs> what does Heathers mean to you and why? It's my favourite teen flick. It's. I think it's something that doesn't date because I think most kids in most schools can relate to someone in that film. Um, whether it's one of the Heathers or whether it's Veronica. Um, yeah. it's, it's a dark teen movie and that's what yeah. I like about it. And it's got lots of issues now that and, are relevant. And like, everyone knew a Heather in their school as well. And I think go. everyone wished they could do what they did in the film for them. There we go. <laughs> Well, I'd like to welcome to the stage again, Michael Lehman and Lisanne Falk. <laughs> do you want to have a check? I wanted to take a picture of this. Okay, you want to do a selfie, babes? Like no, no, we can do a selfie. You guys are amazing. Wave, wave. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't get much better than the Prince Charles cinema, that's for sure. Let's <laughs> say your favorite line. <laughs> How very. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so, yes, a reaction like that is still up. Is it not? Is it not on, my dear? Oh, oh, it's on. Okay. Just, just speak loud. Speak into it. I'm new at this. <laughs> it's, it's been a while. Been a while. So, th as I said, 30 years it's been since this first came out. Did you expect to be sat here in a cinema in the West End of London, watching? <laughs> This film not only re-released, but re-released and uh, re-zhuzhed to, to 4K. Yeah, I've been waiting for this for 29 years. <laughs> yeah, we, we had a discussion the first day of shooting and we said, I bet you in 30 years we will be sitting in a cinema in Leicester Square in London watching this with the most amazing audience ever. Come on, this is serious. Yeah. Seriously, they were awesome. <laughs> So, speaking of when you first saw the film after filming, uh, the film did okay, yeah? Yes. And, but went on to surprise people, didn't it? To become the cult hit that it is now. Uh, I mean, it grew, it, 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 it took its time and after VHS release, it really became something that people spoke about. And did you, were you anticipating that or were you expecting it to be this like runaway hit considering all of the Brat Pat movies were really popular at the time, although this is quite different from those? Yeah. We, we never, ever, ever expected it to be a big box office hit. Mm -hmm. That was not really part of the program. We, we were lucky that it got made and happy that it got released. And it did, it got good reviews when it came out and got a fair amount of attention. So uh, the box office was negligible. The company that released it was going out of business, and so it was in and out of the theaters pretty quick. Yeah. yeah. I mean, they really, they literally ran out of money. Yeah. Um, had, had it been slated for release two weeks later, it would not have made it into the theaters at wow. all. Wow. Yeah. I heard that they, that you wanted to, um, or they wouldn't even put out posters for no, it. Right. They, they, didn't have, they didn't have ads in major cities the second weekend that the movie was out. <laughs> so, yeah, you know, so we were we were happy that it came out and happy that it got good reviews, and yes. I, I, we all felt pretty good about yeah. the movie at the time. Had a good screening at Sundance and all that sort of thing. But you, you're right, nobody anticipated that there would be any afterlife for the movie at all. So that took a few years. So when you started hearing about people talking about Heathers and quoting it and, and finding it sort of influencing certain films afterwards, we, did that, was that a surprise? Did you sometimes, is there a film that you sat there and went, hang on, this looks a bit familiar? No, you, we always said, okay, are they gonna do it better than we did it? You know, you'd look and see, no, no, they didn't, they didn't do that. It's a slow burn, that's the nature of a cult movie, and so what is it, at the 10 year mark, we got a call to come in and do a making of documentary, and then at, oh sorry, at, I thought I'm so loud, at, 15 years, 20 years, 25, and now at 30 years on, it's it's just, 
exploded. It's great. I'm I'm thrilled that you're here with us to talk about it now as well. What first drew you to the? Because this, this was your first film, wasn't it? Yeah. So what first drew you to? How did you get involved with the project? Uh, Dan Waters. Background. Dan, Dan Waters, who wrote it, uh, was uh, best friends in high school with a writer named Larry Karaszewski, who was my buddy from film school. We all knew each other, and I was given the script by Larry on behalf of Dan to help him find an agent. So I didn't read it thinking I was going to direct it, but I read it and said, "This is fucking great." <laughs> and <laughs> and so I took it to my agent, and she uh, immediately jumped on it and signed Dan as a client. And then I said, you know, if you can't get a famous real director to do it, let's see if we can figure out how I can do it. And, uh, and Dan and I were friends, and w we just figured, you know, once Stanley Kubrick passed, then I could get over it. <laughs> yeah. Um, for those of you that don't know, there was, there's a famous story that um, Dan wanted Stanley Kubrick to make this a three-hour high school teen epic. And, um, well, I think we got an epic anyway, yeah. but maybe not a three-hour one. Uh, I, I think Stanley was very upset yeah, once he, he saw the movie. He said, oh my God! Did I really yeah, pass on that he thing? That. <laughs> and and what about you, Lisanne? Um, tell me about your journey joining Heather's. Uh, well, um, I had done uh, several smaller roles in, mm -hmm. in films. Uh, you had a book written about you, didn't you? I did. I was a teen model, mm -hmm. and uh, so I had a book called Lisanne, a young model. Uh, <laughs> Wow, so original. Um, and then I went on to do some acting, and, and I actually just remembered as I'm watching the movie, one of my first acting roles, I was with Ram, Patrick Laberto. I played his girlfriend in a TV movie called The Prince of Bel-Air. And yes. As I didn't know that. I, well, I didn't either until I, it came to me in a flash. I was like, wait a minute. I remembered Patrick. Yes, he was my boyfriend in that movie. He was kinder to me. I <laughs> just, just clarify, Prince of Bel-Air. We're not talking Will Smith, are we? No, no. That, that's the Fresh Prince of that's Bel-Air. Right, okay, no, just, just clarifying. No, just no, clarifying. It was, it was, you know, I think maybe a little before. Mark Harmon was the pool cleaner of all the rich and famous in, oh, in um, Bel-Air. And then Patrick was his protege, and then I was his girlfriend. That was my first role. 31st cast. anniversary yeah. of that movie. I'm, I'm coming out. It's here. It's playing I'll here. <laughs> we'll do it. We'll do it. We do everything here. Yes. And then the, re the rest is history. I mean, from there, it was written on, in stone. I, I mean, really, I just went on an audition, and I got sides i was i was in a you know getting offers mm -hmm. at that point because i was in a big name and i auditioned for heather number one that was what they called heather chandler okay it was very top secret and um i just w went in there and i just wanted any part in this movie because there seriously are no small parts in this movie everybody has a gem to say so um i was just happy to Thank you for casting me. Your audition was so good. She was so good when she came in. We looked at her and we said, she's got to be one of those Heathers. Mm. Speaking of uh, the casting, um, so Christian Slater, obviously, yeah. is JD. But um, do you want to tell us a story about perhaps the, I heard something about the first reading, table read. Yes, this is something that came to my attention later. So we were, we were in prep on the movie. We hadn't put it together yet. I think, uh, you know, it was planned, but it hadn't been fully greenlit. And one of the things we wanted to do was hear how the words sounded read out loud. Uh, because on the page, the script is brilliantly funny and reads great, but the, the um, language is so unusual and it's so convoluted and it's so complex. We just thought, I wonder if this is the kind of thing that reads on the page well but doesn't translate mm. to drama. So... We assembled a group of actors to just sit around the table and read the script. Uh, and this is typical in, in a movie in, in any case. And I was a first time filmmaker. None of us really knew any actors. We had a few friends. Yeah. So we assembled the actor friends we knew, but we didn't have anybody to play JD. And Stacy Travis, who had been to film school with us, who was reading the part of Veronica, said, well, I'm in an acting class, and maybe I can get somebody from my acting class to come in. We said, great, just bring somebody. And she showed up at the reading with this handsome young kid and said, this, uh, it's my friend Brad. Said, okay, Brad, you, you, get, you read that part. Mm. And so we did the reading and uh, evaluated the script and went on all that sort of stuff. Years later, I had another script by Dan Waters that I was trying to put together, and we were trying to get Brad Pitt to be in it. And I met him for lunch at uh, Ben Frank's on Sunset Boulevard, and I was very <laughs> excited. Oh, you know, Brad Pitt, big movie star. Maybe I can get him to do the movie. And I said, uh, do you know Dan Waters' work? And he said, uh, yeah. I said, do you know him? Have you ever met him? He said, yeah, I, I met you and him. <laughs> <laughs>
I said, no, 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 you've never met me and him. And he said, yes, I was the Brad at that table read. Oh, they never, we never forget. Oh, so I have a tape of that. Uh, he acquitted himself very well. He read it completely cold. And he told me when, when I met him, he said, you know, that was really weird for me because I just showed up at this reading and I was handed the script. Wow. He hadn't read it in advance and he was just turning the pages and reading the lines. That's really tricky. Yeah. yeah. Especially for the role of JD. Yeah. Right. And so he was never auditioned. There was no, it wasn't like, oh, we <laughs> turned Brad Pitt down. No, we didn't even know who he was. You, you just denied him you. at the very first <laughs> hurdle. <laughs> yeah. And then he turned me down. <laughs> See, it yeah. was revenge. <laughs> so, um, obviously, talking about the role of JD, he's quite a dark, messed up <laughs> character. Of course. <laughs> yeah. Um, and the, the themes in the film are, especially at the time it came out, were very different from any other teen movie. As I said, I mentioned before, the Brat Pack movies and stuff. They were they dealt with kind of angst and what have you. But to take it to the level that, that Heathers takes it to, was there anything that when you first saw it that you thought, oh, hang on a minute, this is a bit worrying? Or were you just like, yeah. You mean when I first saw the script? Yeah. Oh, no. Well, I looked at it and said, this is fucking great. Bring, <laughs> you know? bring it on. Yeah, bring, yeah let's, let's go fully dark yeah. on this one. And, and did you have any pressure anywhere to sort of adapt anything or change anything? Y yeah, th and this story has been told quite a bit. There was an okay. ending of the script that was darker where the, uh, Veronica and JD blew up the school and the final scene was a prom in heaven. Oh. So that was the, that was the script that we took to the financiers and wanted to make. And the, the head of the studio sat us down and he said, I love the script and I will make this movie, which we were very happy about because mm -hmm. nobody else was saying it. But he said, you cannot do it with that ending. You can't have them blow up the school and you can't have Veronica basically kill herself at the end of the movie because that would send uh, so the wrong message to people. And we Suicide argued, is yeah. bad. Yes, right. <laughs> <laughs> we said, we don't mind sending a bad message out there. <laughs> but... Um, no, we were told basically that they wouldn't make that version of the end, but if we changed the ending, we could make the movie without changing anything else. Wow. So that, at the end of the day, was the best deal we could get. And and I liked the ending that Dan wrote. It, it didn't feel like, I don't think you watch the movie and say this ending is a cop-out. Oh, no. But it's a, it's a lighter, happier... Yeah, lighter, happier <laughs> ending than, than, than the one that we wanted to well, use. Well, I liked, I liked the little ballet... That, that. That, that came about because Carrie Lynn, who played Martha Dunstock, had never been in this contraption before. Oh. <laughs> and we brought it to her and said, uh, can you just go down the hall in this thing? And she said, give me a little time to play around with it. And I saw her in the, in the hallway doing <laughs> circles and laughing and saying, look what I can do on this thing. I said, why don't you do one of those around uh, Veronica at the end? Um, so uh, where are we? Oh, yes. Now, this was a, a pretty amazing cast that you ended up assembling for this. Um, did you get on with everyone? <laughs> what? Of course, it was like a love fest. <laughs> <laughs> it was like Woodstock of the 80s. <laughs> Especially Mike. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, I would say that um, we all respected each other and respected the script and all the, the people involved mm. were um, young and enthusiastic and um, do you want some dish? No, I no, 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 I just, it's just, you know what, it's, 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 I think it's really yeah. interesting when you do a film together and you get on, everyone, everyone yeah. does generally get on because you have to, oh, I saw no, it. No, oh, no, 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 not at all. <laughs> okay, then tell me. <laughs> no, well. <laughs> Films, Other people films. don't get on at all. Right. This was a very happy group. Oh, I'm glad. Everybody, they, they did get along really well. There was this sense of purpose that we all knew that the script was so good, and we all knew yeah. that this was not. I mean, we didn't think we were making a movie any different than what we were making. Right. So pretty much everybody who got into it um, understood what the tone was, and as a consequence, we all shared a kind of sensibility, and everybody got along. However, I, Shannon, who was younger, uh, was probably not quite as on board the same way. And she also had a career as a television star. Yeah, she done... A TV child star. That's yeah. right, yeah. Little yeah. House on the Prairie, wasn't it? Oh, yes. Uh, yeah, uh, no, no, Our House. Oh, 
Oh, it might have been a little house, house on the prairie too. There was <laughs> lots of houses, <laughs> lots yeah. of houses. I like little right. house on the prairie. Right. It sounds better. <laughs> so, um, uh, and she reminded us sometimes that she was the actual, the only actual star. Oh, but it was perfect. It's per she's amazing. It's, but that is her role, and she's isn't it? She's so yeah. good. Yeah. But um, you know, Shannon did get along with everybody. But if there was any, I felt like if there was anything in the way of tension, it came in mm. that direction. I wasn't hanging out with her after work. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but she was fine, professional. Yeah. And I, but I have to now. That just made me think. Cause I put on these um, little bracelets today, and so I did bond with Winona, which you know, on the set, and we had a love of literature and language. And we used to love going through thesauruses and coming up with various words. And we had all these jokes. And she made this bracelet for me after we were done. We, we each made them for each other, these little name bracelets. Oh. And I don't know. Can you read what it says? It was supposed to say cynic, but the person spelled it, it wrong. Oh, clinic. <laughs> <laughs> so it says C-I-N-I-C. -I -I so we uh, cynic. <laughs> so we both have these misspelled bracelets that were both cynics, mutual cynics. And I found that today when I was no. digging through in my heathers. That was our... Um, Gift. Oh. It was a keychain, but I took it apart and put it on the thing. Hmm? Sorry. So I've yeah, I dug up some gems. It's, that's cool. I don't <laughs> and the remember time that. Time capsule. <laughs> <laughs> uh, there's a, a legacy of jewelry, and also uh, the musical. Yes. Yes. Have you seen it? I have. Yeah. <laughs> I've seen it several times, and Michael's coming uh, to the opening in the West uh, End I now. I am going to come, but I, I saw a very early workshop of it, Excellent. so I have seen it as well. Good. And then the recent um, TV version have have you seen any of that no no <laughs> i don't no, think anyone I mean, has i think it's been it's it it's been, I mean, I yeah they they've, they've the, it has been legally yeah entered. it's been it's playing pulled. on hbo norway yeah <laughs> any norwegians in the house <laughs> anyway um well it's not it's it's a apart from the fact that it's 30 years on we're still seeing the film it's got a west end uh, production coming up uh, a tv show that you know was made at least i mean that just speaks <laughs> What can I say? I mean, it speaks for the for the for the for the film that you made and how amazingly it's lasted the test of time. So I think that's amazing. I'm so happy to be here amongst a bunch of fans that I'm sure have a couple of questions that they'd like to ask. So if you put your hands up, maybe we'll take some questions from the audience. Um, how about you, sir? Your hand shot up quite quickly. Have we got a mic coming your way? Michael, Lizanne, thank you so much. Great to... I remember seeing this film on the site of the old at the Primark up the road back in, back in the old Cannon Oxford Street. So the reaction is still more or less the same as it is. Um, just two questions. Um, what was Kim Walker like? Um, and generally, what's the update on the, the, the rumoured Heather's sequel? Well, Kim Walker is a doll. I knew her. We were in acting class together, and she was a sweetheart. And her and Christian were dating at the, the time of the movie, oh. the making of the movie. Oh, I thought that was common knowledge. So, Well, I don't know everything. That wasn't gossip. They were together before she was cast. Yeah, we were told that yeah. she was uh, Christian's girlfriend yeah, before yeah, she yeah. came in. Yeah, um, so that's why she gave good looks when, when Christian and Winona were in scenes together. She was, I was watching her. That's her, right, she yes. did very good looks there. Because I thought those kisses between Winona and Christian were quite but by the believable. End, by the, <laughs> I think by the end of production, Christian and Kim were no longer a <gasps> it, yeah. You heard it here first. <laughs> anyway. Um, and the sequel? Uh. But I also want to say that Kim, she was a really lovely person, and she yeah. was, uh, she was very nervous. Do you remember this? She was so nervous when she shot. I was so struck by that because I was a first-time director, and I was kind of experiencing things for, for the first time. And it would take her a couple takes, and then she would settle in. And she's brilliant. She's so good she's in the not movie. I mean, like that's not her personality at all. No, she's not she, like that. Yeah, she was she's acting a, there. A very sweet and. Yeah, it's horrible. I don't know if everybody knows, but she died of a brain tumor, which is just every time that line is yeah. spoken that she says it, it just kills me. She's like 28 or something. Yeah, she was very young when she horrible. passed. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, sequel to you. Okay. Uh, the sequel <laughs> has been spoken about mostly by Winona Ryder, but not really by anybody else. Um, she kept saying she wanted to do a sequel, and she'd hound me and Dan about doing a sequel, and we would say, sure, Winona, right, whatever. And oh, so cynical. <laughs> no, yeah. <laughs> you <get> that. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but um, at one point, she she encouraged Dan to write it at set in Washington D.C. That the Heather's had become political, 
And, uh, but that's become a reality show, and it's playing right yeah. now. Mm. Um, but you cast and Meryl right. Streep. Didn't she get Meryl Streep? No, Street we cast Donald agree? Trump. Yeah. And oh. he <laughs> okay, another question. Um, this lovely lady here. I've got a mic coming towards you now. There's a mic just there, oh. so we can all hear. A question for both of you. If you could compare your high school selves to one of the characters in Heathers, who would it be? Okay, so so I, I had just thought about that really uh, oddly enough for the first time last night. Cause somebody had asked me that same question, um, and I definitely wasn't a Heather. I was a – Betty Finn would be the closest to what I was. I was a, a bit of a goody two-shoes. I like to do well. I like to get good grades. I was a – I liked – one-to-one -one relationships with friends. It wasn't kind of like the group things just terrified me. So, yeah, I hope that's not disappointing. <laughs> oh, it's lovely. She's a lovely character. I was the kid who put a remote-controlled bomb up a lion's butt. <laughs> <laughs> okay, one more question. Um, at the back, the gentleman at the back there. So they don't, feel, they don't feel left out of the back. We try to include everyone, and if we can, pass that down. <laughs> it's right at the back there. Thank you for the patience. Give us, give us a wave. Give us a wave. Hello. Oh, hi. <laughs> um, first of all, Lisa and hello. It's good to see you again. Oh, uh, we, used to, we used to work together at the living room many, oh my God. many years ago. <laughs> In New York. <laughs> Uh, Los, no, Angeles. Los Angeles. Los Angeles. Oh my, I can't see your face, but I'll, I'll, I'll. We can say, <laughs> uh, But do you think this script could have been made today if it were handed in? Well, we've had this discussion, and we had the great revelation that it wouldn't have to be made today because it's already made. Um, but mm. there has to be obviously there would be something that was relevant to today's you know political condition and what's going on in the world and the issues. So the high school. Um, part of the movie, I think, is still really relevant, and that's the the part that when I speak to teenagers today, that that really resonates with them. The the you know the hierarchy, the the popular people, the unpopular people wanting to fit in. Where do you fit in? Do you care if you fit in? So um, I think that part is is always going to be relevant and probably what makes the movie relatable um, now. So the the topical issues, I mean. Yeah, it's, it would be very complicated because of all the issues yeah. with people shooting people in high schools. In yeah, I mean, that, I that you, so. you definitely wouldn't want to be making fun of now. Or not this way. Yeah. Um, yeah. But, but, uh, <laughs> yeah, not, that, not this way. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah. But it's also, social media has changed things so much that you would have to really do a take that, that involved that, and that would make it even more complicated to replicate yeah. the kind of stuff that's here, because everything, all the bullying, which is at the center of the story, you know, mm. if you want to look at what it's really yeah. about, it's bullying and revenge against it. Um, those things are all carried out in social media now, so uh, they're, they're a little bit less cinematic than putting a, a, a handwritten note on a lunch yeah. tray. And less innocent. <laughs> yes, less innocent, I guess. But um, the, the issues are still out there floating around. So in that sense, some very clever person is going to write a really good, dark, satirical movie about high school that will do even more than what this does. So whoever you are, good luck. <laughs> Start writing. <laughs> so um, I guess we're going to finish up with just one last question. I would like to know, because there's some, there's some humdingers of quotes in this film, and I would like to know what your favorite quote from Heather's is. If you can think of one. What's, what's, our, what's our favorite quote today, Michael? Well, <laughs> <laughs> it does. It changes uh, yeah, every day. I, but uh, for 30 years, I've laughed every time I've seen uh, Shannon say, why are you pulling my dick for <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, I don't know. <laughs> it's a good one. Yeah. She, she delivers that perfectly. And I always told Dan Waters, I said, what in the world? That is that? so yeah. funny. I don't know why. <laughs> but it wasn't, I didn't think it was as funny until she, the way she said it was just perfect. She, she hit yeah. that one. Yeah. yeah. Well, the, the one that just is the, the, the adult characters in the film, watching it now as a, an adult, um, I really enjoyed their, their lines. And, and um, when Pauline Fleming sees Veronica after, <laughs> she goes, Veronica, I, I, uh, JD told me you committed suicide. And she goes, uh, well, well, you know, we need to have a talk whether or not to commit suicide is one of the most important decisions a teenager can make. I mean, that's just, come on, that's ridiculous. Yeah. <laughs> It made me laugh. The last I really like that one I too. Mean, That's um, very funny. And then I like my my favorite line is w when uh, Winona says, "If everybody jumped off a bridge, would you?" And 
I say probably, <laughs> because that that's encapsulates the character of Heather McNamara perfectly. Because really, she's just there for the ride. You know, she's not the uh, architect. Is that? Yeah. The <laughs> I mean, have any of you guys read the original script or the earlier drafts that they get out in the world anywhere? Because this, the the earlier drafts that were longer were filled. They had more of those yeah. those incredible lines. Nice. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, oh. quite a few more that never made it into the film. Would you make it exactly the same? No. <laughs> no? Well, no. I mean, would I make it exactly the same? I wouldn't make it again. So, uh, you know. Well, I'm glad you did. Yeah. No. <laughs> are we, are no we're all glad I, you did. <laughs> I, I guess what I mean is it's different every time you do anything. That's so, true. So, you know, uh, I wouldn't do like what Gus Van Sant did when he remade Psycho. <laughs> right. Yeah. yeah. I wouldn't do that either. <laughs> <laughs> no judgment here well this is not a terrible film this is a classic and we're really grateful for you guys to coming here to the Prince Charles Cinema to have a chat with us about it um, a huge thank you as well to Arrow Films who have remastered this put this out in 4K in cinemas no less Cinema. which is out tomorrow out tomorrow thank so you, tell your thank friends you, all to go and see it Arrow and a special giant thank you to Michael Lehman and Lisanne Falk Thanks for joining us.